this video, we are putting every single brawler in the game up against 3,000 bones. I did this a couple of years ago, but since then, we've had a ton of new brawlers added into the game. Plus, every brawler now has a second gadget to use. We're going to start it off with the worst brawlers and work our way up to the best, which means we're starting with Jessie. Her main attack is two tiles wide and travels nine tiles, and her turret might have been able to help if there was like an enemy on the other side of the skulls, but there isn't. So she destroys 18 skulls and ties for 58th place. And tying with her is Lou. Now, Lou's attack is just like Jesse's, and his super, even though it does deal damage every second, it doesn't actually break any skulls, so it doesn't help him. Also, tying with Jesse and Lou for 18th place is Max. Max fires seven projectiles with her main attack, and it does cover 18 tiles, although not in two straight lines like the first two brawlers. Then her super just makes her fast, which isn't helpful at all. And also tying with Jesse, Lou, and Max is Eve at 18 tiles total. Her hatchlings don't break any skulls, even if they do latch onto nearby enemies, so they all take 58th place with a score of 18 tiles. We've got more to show, but first I want to give a big thank you to a long-term partner, Razer, for sponsoring this video. Razer's just released their new Razer Cortex Games Rewards app, where you can earn points and redeem real rewards just by playing your favorite mobile games. Click the link below to download the app now. Every week there are seasonal events where you can earn Razer Silver just by playing popular mobile games. Some of these include Candy Crush Saga, Words with Friends, and of course, Brawl Stars. Now once you've earned enough silver, you can cash it in for real prizes from Razer. We're talking keyboards, headsets, mice, mouse pads, gaming chairs, merch, and more. There's also a feature in the app called Gaming Mode that enhances your gaming experience. You can make your device vibrate on tap, see what frame rate your games are playing at while you play, and many other cool features as well. The Razer Cortex app is only available for Android at the moment, but stay tuned for more info on iOS. And click that link below to start earning your Razer Silver today, and once again, a big thank you to Razer for sponsoring this video. Now, Mr. P doesn't get help from his super, and his main attack only breaks through 14 tiles while on the ground. But after it bounces, eight more skulls get destroyed, so he destroys 22 total skulls and gets 57th place. Next is 8-Bit, and his super doesn't deal any damage, but his main attack is very long and actually has some good width to it. I double-checked his extra credits gadget, and it doesn't break any additional skulls at all, and 8-Bit destroys 23 total skulls and gets 56th place. In 55th place is Buster, whose super doesn't help him at all since he has no projectiles to reflect off of his shield. His main attack doesn't have very good range, but it is very wide, and he destroys 24 skulls. Next is Ash's main attack, which doesn't break too many skulls, but he's our first brawler that can actually break some skulls with his super. It does require a target for the rats to explode, and their radius is small, but it does make a little bit of difference. For brawlers that can destroy skulls with both their attack and their super, we actually add their score together, and Ash gets 26 total for 54th place. Next is Rosa, who gets to just use her attack since her super does not break any skulls. However, she is actually able to use her grow light gadget to break a few skulls, so Rosa does end up destroying 29 skulls and gets 53rd place because we do add her gadget score. Next is Sandy, who gets no help from his super, even with his rude sand star power equipped. He doesn't get help from his gadgets either, but his main attack covers a really big area by itself, and he destroys 31 skulls and gets 52nd place. Just like Sandy, Pam gets no help from her super despite her star power that deals damage, and she doesn't have a gadget to help either. Her attack covers more area than Sandy's attack, though, does, and she destroys 34 skulls and gets 51st. Next, we have Leon, and he doesn't get any help from his super or gadget at all, but out of all the brawlers that can only use their main attack in this test, he scores the highest. He destroys 35 skulls and gets 50th place. Next is Edgar, who has a very small attack range, but thanks to his hard landing star power, his super does break a lot of skulls. He's unable to jump on top of the skulls, but when he lands right next to them, it does break them. He destroys 37 skulls and gets 48th place. And tying with him is Buzz. His main attack is also very short, but it has a little bit more width than Edgar's does. And even though his super doesn't deal damage, it does actually break skulls, and it has a fairly decent range. Next is Sprout, whose main attack cannot be thrown on top of the skulls, but it will bounce through them after it hits the ground. Plus, he gets help from his star power, which increases the radius as well. Now, its super does also break skulls that are touching it after the wall actually disappears, and it gets 47th place by breaking 39 skulls. Next, we have Sam, whose main attack does have some decent width to it, but its range is actually pretty short. He does get a little help from his pulse repellent gadget, though, and destroys 40 skulls and gets 45th place. Up next, we've got Colette, whose main attack does break a decent number of skulls by itself. But then we have her super, which is kind of weird because if she uses it right next to the skulls, she actually won't break through them, so she has to get a little bit of space before activating it. She destroys 40 total skulls and ties with Sam for 45th. Next, we got a two-way tie for 42nd place. Colt's attack breaks two rolls of skulls, and his super is no different. His super does have a little bit more range than his regular attack, though, and in total, he destroys 42 skulls. Then we have Belle, who's basically just like Colt, and both their supers and their attack ranges are very similar, and both their abilities are very narrow. In fact, they're so similar that they actually tie with each other at breaking 42 skulls. Um, next 
Next is Bull, whose main attack can cover a decent area, and his super actually travels pretty far. Even though his Stomper Gadget does slow enemies down, it doesn't actually deal any damage, so it doesn't help with breaking any skulls. He destroys 44 and gets 42nd place. Next we have Nita, whose main attack covers three rows of skulls, and it actually goes a pretty far distance. Her bear doesn't break any skulls with her with its attack, but her bear paws gadget does break a lot of surrounding skulls. She gets a total score of 45 and places 41st. Next is Otis, who's able to break a lot of skulls with his regular attack, plus a few additional thanks to his fat splatter gadget. His super also helps as well, and so he destroys 47 in total and gets 40th place. Next is Lola, who breaks 24 skulls with just regular attack, and since her super is just another one of her, the exact same attack pattern actually happens, and her score gets doubled. She covers a total area of 48 tiles and gets 39th place. Next is Gus, who's kind of weird. I don't know why, but his regular attack goes in pretty much any direction other than the one he's aiming at. His attack and super do cover some good area, and he breaks a few skulls with his kooky popper gadget as well. He destroys 49 skulls and gets 38th place. Now, Penny doesn't break very many skulls with her regular attack by herself, but after hitting an enemy at max range, the coins break a lot more skulls. She's only able to use one star power at a time, and Master Blaster breaks just three more skulls than Heavy Coffers does, so she gets a total score of 52 and gets 37th place. Next, we have Bonnie. Now, I didn't combine the scores of Bonnie's two different forms, but I took the best of the two forms for each of her abilities. She breaks one more skull with her main attack while she's in her cannon form than in her melee form, and her super obviously breaks more in her cannon form. Then we have her gadget that breaks more in her melee form. She destroys a total of 55 skulls and gets 36th place. Next, we have Amber, who only gets one single flame from her main attack, but it does break a decent number of skulls. Interestingly enough, her super doesn't actually break any skulls at all. Fortunately, her second gadget has a good size radius, so it makes up for her super. Amber destroys 59 skulls and gets 35th place. Next, we got Bo, whose main attack has good width and range, and each of his projectiles have a tiny blast radius of their own. Then you have his super, which he can use thanks to his tripwire gadget, and it's also able to break quite a few skulls. He gets a total score of 60 tiles and gets 34th place. Now, Piper breaks two rows of skulls with her main attack, and she has very good range. She doesn't get any help from her gadgets, but her super does break a lot more skulls with each bomb. She scores 61 and places 33rd. Now, Stu's main attack only break a few skulls, and his super breaks even less because he can't dash through them. However, with his zero drag star power and his breakthrough gadget, he's not only able to use the full length of his super, but the projectiles from his gadget break a ton of extra skulls. Stu destroys 64 in total and gets 32nd place. Next is Tick, and both of his gadgets actually break some extra skulls, but his Mind Mania gadget only breaks 7 more skulls than his main attack by itself, while Last Hurrah breaks 21. His super also breaks a few skulls so long as the target it's detonated on is right next to them. He destroys 67 in total and gets 31st place. Next, we have Grom's main attack, which covers the same area from left to right, but because of where the projectile lands, it covers a little bit more going down than going up. His super is similar, and it covers a lot of area. He destroys 72 skulls in total and gets 29th place. Next, we have Byron, who uses his boosted booster gadget to triple the area that his main attack normally covers. His super also has a good radius, so Byron destroys 72 skulls in total and ties with Grom for 29th place. Next, we have El Primo, whose main attack it does not cover very much area. And his super does have a pretty good radius, but his score gets bumped up a ton thanks to his asteroid belt gadget, which covers a huge area around the nearest enemy. He destroys 74 skulls in total and gets 26th place. Next, we got Barley, who doesn't have any gadgets or star powers to help him, but his main attack has a decent radius, and his super is basically five of his attacks. He destroys 74 total skulls and ties with El Primo for 26th place. Next is Mortis, who uses his long dash to take a couple of rows of skulls, and his super has even more range than his dash. Coincidentally, his combo spinner gadget breaks as many skulls as his attack and his super combined. He destroys 74 skulls and ties with El Primo and Barley for 26th place. Next is Shelly, whose clay pigeon's gadget increases her range by a lot, but it doesn't actually increase her area. In fact, it decreases the total area by two tiles. Her super obviously covers way more range than just her regular attack, so she destroys a total of 77 skulls and gets 25th place. Natera only has her main attack and her super to help her in this test, but both of them cover a fair amount. Even though her super doesn't deal any damage until it explodes in the middle, it instantly breaks all the skulls within its range. She destroys 79 in total and gets 24th place. Now Surge has a very long attack after his second upgrade, and if he hits an enemy at level 4, his attack spreads out and breaks a ton of extra skulls. Now he can't use his super to jump on top of the skulls, but he still breaks quite a few just by landing next to them. He destroys 
83 in total and gets 21st place with the next two rollers. And one of those is Brock, who has a gadget that does break some skulls, but his rocket fuel gadget only adds a few to his main attack, while rocket laces breaks way more skulls by itself. His more rocket star power actually does make a difference in this test as well, but only by adding two more skulls to his super. He covers 83 tiles and ties with Surge and Colonel Ruffs for 21st place. Now, Colonel Ruffs breaks a decent number of skulls with his main attack and his super each individually, but then you have his air support gadget. Now, it does overlap itself in a lot of spots, but it still covers a massive area. He destroys 83 skulls and ties with Surge and Brock for 21st place. Next, we have Gene, whose regular attack covers a very large area because of how it splits off after it reaches max range. And even without his Spirit Slap star power, his super can break through skulls for its entire length. He destroys 88 in total and gets 19th place. And that actually ties Gene with Meg. Now, just like Bonnie, I let Meg use whichever attack broke more skulls between her and her mecha's supers and attacks. And as you might have guessed, her mecha covers a lot more area. Her attack breaks three rows of skulls, and her super has a very wide range, and she can even break some skulls with her heavy, heavy metal star power. Next, we got Frank, who doesn't have any gadgets that can break skulls, but his main attack is very wide and reaches very far. Then his super reaches even further, and he's able to destroy 91 skulls in total and gets 18th place. And at this point, every brawler can break more than 100 skulls, which is just crazy. Starting off is Gale, whose attack has a good range, but it's wide enough to break four rows of skulls. His super is basically the same thing, except it can break six rows of skulls, and he destroys 108 in total and gets 17th place. Now, out of all the brawlers in the game with a solid fan-shaped attack, Pocos covers the most area. His screeching soul star power also allows him to use his super to break skulls, and it has even more range than his attack does. Poco destroys 111 skulls and gets 15th place. And that actually ties in with Griff, whose attack isn't quite as wide as Poco's, but Griff's super covers an even bigger area than Poco's super does. Plus, he has his piggy bank gadget that adds some extra skulls to his score, and he also destroys 111 in total and ties with Poco for 15th place. Next, we have BB, whose main attack is really short. It does have some good width to it, though, but her super travels so far far. I actually had to rearrange the map just to show how many skulls her super can break. She destroys 112 in total and gets 14th place. Next, we have Carl, whose main attack breaks a couple of rows of skulls, and his flying hook gadget breaks the same amount of skulls. He's not allowed to move during the attack to try and cover some more, just in case you're curious. But then we have his super, which I did allow him to move, since it does rely so much on movement. And as you can see, he destroys a total of 117 skulls and gets 13th place. Next is Jackie, whose attack doesn't reach very far, but since it's in a circle, it breaks a ton of skulls. Then her super is even bigger and breaks even more skulls than her attack does. She destroys a total of 122 and gets 12th place. Next, we got Ems, whose attack has a good range and width and breaks a lot of skulls using her friend zoner gadget as well. Then her super, which instantly breaks every skull within a massive radius around her and is very satisfying to watch. She destroys 155 in total and gets 11th place. And we are down to the top 10 and from here, it starts to ramp up really quickly. Squeak uses his wind-up gadget to add a little extra distance to his main attack, and his bombs do break a few skulls when it blows up. Then you have his super, which sends projectiles in six different directions, and they all break skulls as they travel and explode once they've stopped. Squeak destroys 157 skulls and gets 10th place. But next, we've got Fang, whose attack and super each break a couple of rows of skulls. It's his corn foo gadget, though, that just, even though it doesn't deal very much damage, its area is absolutely massive. He destroys 178 skulls in total and gets ninth place. Next is Nani, whose main attack does cover some decent area since its three projectiles are moving in different directions, but then her super is definitely what puts her in the top 10. There isn't even enough room on the map for her to fly it straight the whole way, so I had to make a slight turn at the end. She destroys 180 skulls and gets eighth place. But we got a huge jump up next with Dynamite, whose attack and super are, you know, I mean, they're, they're honestly actually pretty impressive, but it's his fidget spinner gadget that sends several sticks of dynamite in every sort of different direction. They're all exploding in different spots, taking skulls with them. He destroys 208 total skulls, which makes him the first brawler to break over that 200 mark, and he gets seventh place. Next, we have Spike, and thanks to his curveball star power, he actually breaks more skulls with his main attack than any other main attack in the game. Then we have his super, which also covers a fair area, but his popping pin cushion 
efficient gadget breaks tons of skulls in every direction. He destroys a total of 220 and gets sixth place. Up next, we got B, whose main attack has a very far range and her super spreads out towards the end, but her rattled hive gadget. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying to watch. They destroy skulls in all sorts of different directions. They're constantly moving away from her. They never repeat the same path. She destroys 232 skulls and gets fifth place. And coming in fourth place is Rico. His main attack and super are pretty narrow, but his super does have a pretty far range. But it's his multi-ball launcher gadget. It's almost just as much range as his super, but instead of just firing in one direction, it fires in eight. He destroys 257 skulls and gets fourth place. We've got another huge jump up to third place with Daryl. His attack kind of sucks for this test, actually, but his super somehow glitches and the skulls make him travel way further than he should have. But then you have his rotating recoiler gadget, which breaks skulls all around him, almost in a perfect circle because of how many projectiles he fires. He destroys 293 skulls and gets third place. But coming in second place is Janet. Now, she actually breaks the most skulls with her main attack if she fully charges it. And then her super, <laughs> it breaks a ton of skulls because of how long it lasts. I mean, you got bombs flying all over the place. Each one of the bombs takes out a huge area as well. But then you have her drop the base gadget, which is one of the most satisfying things to see in this test because it's a perfect circle and the radius is massive. She destroys a total of 298 skulls and gets second place. But then we've got our number one contestant, which does break that 300 area mark. And that is Crow. He does not get any help from his star powers or gadgets and his attack breaks a fair amount of skulls, but his super is just outrageous. I actually had to adjust the map a little for Crow in order to see the maximum number of skulls that he could break with his super. And if you're wondering, that number with just his super alone is 298 skulls, and that's just as much as Janet breaks with all of her abilities. Add that with his attack, and he destroys a total of 332 skulls, making him absolutely by far the number one brawler for this test. That was incredibly satisfying to watch, but the real question is, is Crow truly the king of area control? Let me know in the comment section below or tell me who you think actually is the king. Make sure you subscribe for future content and also feel free to suggest a future Olympics that you'd like me to remake or a new one you would like me to make and check out these Brawl Stars videos right here. For now, this is Kara Stein ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.